So in this, we are going to look into an exam revision of our April 2024 exam, looking into the measurement of power in our AC circuits, which is the measurement of power in uh, three phase systems. So everything, guys, regarding the information we talked about uh, from our introductions, more questions uh, from our membership and other classes that we had. So we're just going to continue with questions. So I hope by now the mis uh, misunderstanding of calculations is no longer there. So we just want to have a revision together and see. So there we are given the input to a three phase, all right? Balance the load was measured by using the two watt meter method. The readings are taken, uh, the readings taken are, so these are the two readings respectively with a line voltage of, all right? So according to these readings, I said you are going to take the power in your way, according to the way that you want. Guys, the formulas, as you can see, we've got one formula which can be written in another way like this. So it does not matter which one represents the reading of the watt meter one, which one is for the watt meter two, but take your values as they are. So I'm just gonna take this one as my watt meter one, does not matter guys. So that's 15. Uh, kilowatts. Then the second one, I'm going to take that as for the watt meter two, which is negative five kilowatts with a line voltage of, so we have got our line voltage, which is 400 volts. So the question was out of this information that we have 5.31, it was to calculate the total active power, the true power, the total power that's active, which is from what? The watt meters, remember? For a two watt meter, the total power is actually our input. The total power represents P in, which is the sum of the watt meters, watt meter one plus what we have for the watt meter two. So that was going to give us uh, the total power. So we have 15 and the other one is what? A negative five as it is, you take that with a negative. So that was going to give us a positive 10 uh, in our calculation. So this is 10 uh, kilowatts. All right, let's move on to second question, the power factor. In this case, we are not told, guys, it's an inductive circuit, or the, the one that we are talking about. We're not even told about the type of the load, just a three-phase balanced load. Is it from where? Is it from an alternator? Is it from where? Is it from the motor? Like what type of the load is it that we have? So we cannot tell. So therefore, I said on the introduction, if you're not given, in that case, guys, you just use your power factor as usual. Calculate your power factor, then you leave it like that. Don't mention to say it's positive or negative. To say it's the lagging or leading, I mean. The lagging part of, is the one that I said and it's just because majority of these loads are what? Inductive. That's why we end up using lagging. But in this case, if you have confusion, guys, leave it like that. All right? So that is it, uh, 5.32. So our power factor, uh, we do not know the value because we do not have the angle. But we have, remember here, the sum of these two. Uh, and also, we, all right, so let us just go back to our turn. Uh, here, we're just going to go back to our tan. Remember that our tan of phi is equal to the square root of 3 into, so as I said, as for me, I'm going to stick to this one. If you are using this formula, stick to that one, all right? Still going to have the same values there. So according to this one is 2 minus 1 over the sum, uh, watt meter 2 plus watt meter 1. So guys, we're just going to substitute our values so that we can calculate our angle theta. So that's the square root of three. Watt meter two, uh, remember according to us here, it's negative five. Watt meter one is 15. So that's negative five minus 15. So that's negative five minus 15 over what? The sum of these two. So already you calculated, this is it. But if guess that you've forgotten, you calculate, just take the minus five plus what plus 15, still you're gonna have the same answer. 
for w2 remember it's what minus 5 plus 15 do not worry but we already calculated this which is what the 10 that we are seeing here all right so simplify this properly guys that was gonna give us the turn of phi which is uh let us say okay it's because i fixed my calculator to three decimal places so gonna be three decimal places square root of three uh into what minus five minus five like this then you're gonna have to subtract negative 15 i mean to subtract the 15 over what over this 10 so this is you can just put a bracket there negative 5 plus 15 if you are having a challenge in understanding this so that's minus 2 square root of 3 so i've got minus 2 square root of 3 or as a decimal you can even write this as it is or just this one as it is so that will be to find the angle actan shift tan of the answer that we had uh, that is going to give us negative 73 is because we used actan of the negative. So do not, do not focus with this negative. Ignore it, guys. Because in your actual sense, all right, this decimal, uh, remember, we say this decimal is negative uh, 3.464, like that, something like that. So in the calculation of this angle, ignore that negative, right? 3.464 or this 2 square root of 3. Without the negative, ignore that negative, all right? So that was going to give us 73.897. Angle that we have there, just put, just remove that negative, does not matter. This negative is not to affect our answer to say, if we see that negative, our power factor, uh, then it's lagging or what? No. Remember, cos is not affected by negative angles. Cos remains positive. From a negative angle, if it is an acute angle, it is positive. So it does not affect our course. So even if you use that negative, guys, it does not affect your course. Course is not affected like that. All right, let's see, guys. This is we have a ne negative here. Let's find course of our answer. I want you to see what I'm trying to say. Here, this one. Course of the answer, as you can see, it was negative. It is giving us a positive value. Course is not affected by that. So whether you use as a negative, Take as a post, guys. Do not even mind about that. So, therefore, our power factor was going to be what the cos of uh, 73.897 degrees. So, this is what you're going to have, guys. The same answer 0 0.277. So, we have got the power factor, but like I said, you can leave it like that because there we do not know the type of the load that we are working with. So, you cannot say it's lagging or lead, but. Just because majority of our loads are what? Inductive. We can say leg in power factor and does not affect our answer or just leave it like that. All right. So this is what you need to take note about this type of equation. Then the line current. Okay. So 5.33, the line current can be calculated because we've got what? The line voltage and we have got uh, the input. Remember, our P total here is our input. This P total is our input. So that means we can calculate the line current from there. How do we calculate the line current? Uh, remember, input, so that's 5.33. We need to calculate the line current. So from input, which is our P total, all right? From P total, which is what? Uh, remember, it represents the square root of three line voltage, line current times the power factor. So we need the line current. So therefore, our line current was going to be the input, which is our P total over what? Square root of three, uh, line voltage times what? The power factor. going to remove this, remove this, remove this by what? By dividing. So just like that, guys, everything was going to be calculated. In this case, your input, 10 kilowatt, you have... Uh, that's 10 times 10 to the exponent of 3 to remove our kilowatt. Uh, square root of 3 times our line voltage. Remember, our line voltage, 400 volts. So we've got uh, the line voltage of 400 volts. Then our power factor, like we said uh, from the course here that we obtained, whether you're using a negative, the course is not affected. It's going to be this positive. 
uh, 0.277. So you're going to multiply by what? 0.277. Just like that, you have got your line current in that case. So that was going to give us 52.107 amps. So that is the condition, guys. So you have to be careful uh, with the questions uh, that you are given. Understanding of the question is very, very important and using of the formulas uh, that you are given. Try to apply your formulas uh, as you have your new textbooks. Uh, you might find new formulas presented in another way, like I explained before, but does not mean that what we had before has changed. The formulas are still the same. Just like a presentation, they want you to follow up. You know, it's just a follow suit, guys. So let's do revise as many questions as we can.